Welcome to Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core, a course to help you get started using the Telerik UI set of components and features in your own applications. My name is Alex Ziskind, and I've been training developers like you in modern web technologies for a few years now, and I'll be taking you on this journey today. In this course, we'll take the approach of putting you in the shoes of an engineer that's adding new features to an existing application for a client, RPS. You've previously already developed version one of the RPS Project Tracker, which is a web-based issue tracking application. And now your client wants you to add new features and update the application to version two. Throughout this course, we'll be incorporating features and components from the Telerik UI library into an existing ASP.NET Core application. We'll be doing some exercises in this course, so make sure you download the code base to help you get started. We'll look at the before and after states of the application so you see the goal of what each exercise is trying to accomplish. We'll start out by adding basic Telerik UI components to the application, and you'll see how to harness the power of Telerik UI in a matter of minutes. This will show you how to install buttons, dropdowns, sliders, inputs, and more. Then we'll get into some more advanced components like the chart and the grid. Now, components don't live in isolation, and it's important to know how they interact with each other. So we'll see how to incorporate Telerik UI components to interact with existing functionality of the application and with each other. Finally, we'll see how to change the theme of all the components all at once. We'll also build our own theme, and we'll see some other styling options available with Telerik UI. By the end of this course, you'll know how to navigate the Telerik UI documentation site and how to incorporate the components you'll find there into your own applications. Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core is a library designed to offer a full breadth of UI components and UI-related features that give developers everything they may need in a single toolkit. And while Telerik UI is known for their extensive set of UI components, Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core is more than just UI widgets. Along with the UI components, Telerik UI includes optional tools and features that help development. Features like a front-end abstraction layer called Data Source, which offers a very powerful way to perform data operations that also integrate with advanced components like the grid. Client-side validation is also built in, as well as globalization for simplifying the creation of multilingual apps. There are also other useful features like PDF and Excel export, drag and drop, and a templating engine that are all optional, but it's nice to know that they're there. Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core is designed to be modular. As we'll see in this course, you can use only the components that you need in order to keep your code base as light as possible. It also gives you options on how components are included in your application. In this course, we're going to include the server-side components using a NuGet package, and we're going to include the client-side components using an archive downloaded from your account. But you can also include the client-side libraries using a content distribution network, or CDN. Three other huge benefits to using Telerik UI is that it's backed by a team of developers with unlimited professional support, and there are frequent updates to the library, and there's also an extensive documentation set. In order for you to be successful with this course, let's take a look at some of the prerequisites next. This is a beginner level course for those that are getting introduced to the Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core library. However, it is aimed at those developers who already know ASP.NET Core, Therefore, it's required that you already know ASP.NET Core and JavaScript concepts before jumping into this course. We're going to focus on Telerik UI in this course and the tag helpers and HTML helpers that come with the library. Our interaction with writing ASP.NET Core specific code will be very limited. That's why it's assumed that you already know the Razor View Engine syntax and how to use Razor Views and Razor Pages. It's assumed that you already know how to use ASP.NET Core concepts such as routing, controllers, actions, and how to work with the page model. You should know how to use tag helpers and HTML helpers in your Razor views. We'll be using the ones that come with Telerik UI, which I'll also sometimes refer to as Kendo UI, and we'll also be using our own custom tag helpers here as well. You won't need to write your own, but you'll be using the ones that I provide with the sample application. Now, I did also mention that JavaScript is a requirement. It's not a strong requirement. Because we're mostly using server-side technologies in this course, you're not strictly required to know JavaScript. But we will be using JavaScript to enhance some experience of using the Kendo UI library. JavaScript is a highly recommended skill to learn, especially nowadays that it's so prevalent in the enterprise and large applications in general. 
that it's highly recommended that you learn this skill anyway. However, we won't be covering it in detail in this course. The JavaScript bits that we will need for the course are already part of the starter sample application, and I'll explain any extra code that we need as we go. Finally, you don't need any prior Telerik UI experience or knowledge. We'll cover everything that you need in this course. And the same goes for Bootstrap. While we'll use Bootstrap for initial styling, as well as layout, it's not required knowledge for this course. As far as the tools we'll be using in this course, all the demos are going to be demonstrated using Visual Studio Community Edition, which is a free tool available from Microsoft. Visual Studio Professional and Enterprise Editions will work just as well. You may want to have Git set up and configured on your system as well, so you can clone the demo code. However, the code is hosted on GitHub, which also allows you to download a zip archive of the demo applications, so having Git is not a strict requirement. We'll be looking at the sample applications a little bit later. Let's take a look at the resources you're going to use to go along with this course and throughout the course of your work with Telerik UI. Let's go over some resources that you should have handy while working on this course. There are some sample applications that you'll want to download. I'll come back to where to get them and how to run them in a little bit. For now, let's look at a few web pages you should keep open. If you head over to Telerik.com, you can tap on the demos link here and then scroll down a little bit. On the right side, you'll see Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core. This link will take you to the sample applications. However, sometimes these pages change around due to the design changes that take place pretty often. So you can always get to the sample applications by going to All Products and then UI for ASP.NET Core and then head over to Demos. This page will allow you to have access to all the demos of all these components that come with ASP.NET Core as well as the sample applications that were built by the company that developed the product. If you take a look at a sample application, I'm gonna click on this one right here. You can see examples of many of the components implemented on this page in this application. And this will give you a good sense of how the components are organized. You'll usually have a link that says, the source for this demo is available on GitHub. You can click on that link, which will take you to the GitHub repository for this sample application. So if you go there, you'll see a fairly recently updated application. You can download the code and run it for yourself. This is a very handy tool if you're just learning. Now let's just go back to the demos Telerik UI site where you have the ASP.NET Core components listed. This is an invaluable tool that you must have open. And we're gonna have this open while we're developing our application. Let's say you click on one of these components listed. I'm gonna click on the grid. This will take you to an interface that shows off the components and the different usage scenarios that you can use with these components. Here on the grid page, you have the basic usage for the grid. It lists examples, features, the source code that you can use directly. It even includes sample server-side code that works with the source code. So this is a really good tool for you to utilize while you're developing. And you can scroll through all the different components and access them this way as well. The navigation even shows you which components are new. Now this demo site is very useful because it has examples that the documentation site doesn't. So that's why you should have this one open as well as the documentation while you're developing. Speaking of the documentation site, I'm gonna open that one as well. I'm gonna go to Telerik.com and then All Products, and then I'm gonna click on UI for ASP.NET Core, and then I'll click on Docs and Support up here. Scroll down a little bit and click on Documentation. Here you'll be able to get to the API reference, You'll also see the getting started section. And of course, the component documentation. We'll be using the tag helpers extensively throughout this course, and we'll touch upon the HTML helpers as well for the grid component. Another section for you to keep an eye on is the breaking changes section. Because the ASP.NET Core framework itself is constantly changing, there are gonna be a lot of updates. So keep an eye on this section for common issues on HTML helpers and tag helpers from the Telerik UI ASP.NET Core library. Now, besides the UI for ASP.NET Core documentation, we're also gonna be using the Kendo UI for jQuery documentation. And that's because some of the same resources are used across the frameworks. So the UI for ASP.NET Core framework actually uses some of the Kendo UI for jQuery client-side libraries. The more technical reason for this is that the Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core actually provides server-side wrappers for the Kendo UI for jQuery library. Don't let this confuse you too much. 
you really don't have to deal with jQuery besides including it in your layout views. You might need to refer to the Kendo UI for jQuery documentation once in a while for topics such as web font icons and custom client-side JavaScript bundles. We're also gonna be looking at the documentation when we're looking at client-side templates. But don't worry, I'll go through this with you when we get to those topics. This is the Kendo UI for jQuery documentation site, so you should have this one open as well. All right, let's take a look at our demo application that we'll be working with in the next lesson. Before we start coding, we need to see what we're coding. Let's take a quick trip of the project tracker. Here's the dashboard page of the project tracker where we can see active issues and some brief statistics about the total issues in the system. Here at the top, we can filter by a time period, whether it's the last three months, six months, or one year. At the bottom, you have a chart here that displays the open items versus closed items. We're gonna be implementing all of this in this course. We can also filter by user, and all the filters interact with each other and are taken into account to display the active issues and the chart. Now, on the backlog page, we have a grid view of all the issues that's pageable, and we can filter by either my items or open items or closed items. Here we can add new items if we need to, and there's our new item. I can go into the details for each of the items and edit the details. Everything is saved on the fly, and I can have an item type, which I'll state as a bug. Status will be open. The estimate is a rough estimate of the time that it's gonna to take to complete the bug. And I can give this a priority. I can also pick an assignee for this particular bug. And I have a tabbed interface at the top, which we're also gonna implement, that allows me to add tasks, complete the tasks, or change the task names, or delete the tasks. And I also have a comments section called Chit Chat. Here I can just add comments to other people's items or to my own item. That's a quick tour of the application that we're going to be working with.